I've been up north almost as long as I've been down south, so I'm I'm a northerner. I'm a northerner. <laughs> Hard as nails. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. How important was that victory against Watford? Um, I thought it was massive. You know, um, obviously we were, we needed that result, and um, I think getting that result will give us good good momentum for the next few games to uh, obviously. Uh, try and stay up and that's that's the aim isn't it so yeah I think it would be massive for us as a club and yeah the lads gives us confidence as well to go into the next games and um, we believe we can beat anyone on our day when we play well so yeah we just need to keep pushing as a team and yeah I thought it was huge for us massive you, you made a huge impact on the game um, you know being involved in the second and third goals and up until that point um, it had been a relatively scrappy affair um, and there was a bit of tensions at 1-0 and um, what was what was kind of going through your mind when you came on? Did you know exactly what it was you were setting out to do and try and take take control of that game? Um, well, the gaffer just said, obviously, I think they were getting on top a little bit and the gaffer told us just to, like, get round second balls, like, get into them, be aggressive and try and get us back in the game, really. And in my mind, that's that's my game, getting into players and causing causing a bit of a nuisance in the, in the middle of the park. And, yeah, I was just... That's, that was my mindset, and obviously with the uh, with the assists and stuff, it was just t- topped it off with an even better performance for me personally. It was, it was. But you've been able to to adapt really, really quickly to to Jesse Marsh's style. Why do you think that yeah. is? Um, I think it's it's because like since I was young, off the ball, I've always worked hard, and he loves like um, reactions off the ball. When you lose the ball react straight away so yeah I think that, that's my game and I suit his way his style of football basically and and, and it, is that is that style brilliant. of football yeah I mean you've you've worked so hard um in, in the middle of the park is, is that style uh different to adapt to from what we've had for the last few years under under Marcelo or is it is it something that's been relatively quite fluid because I mean Jesse said that you of all people have taken to it like a duck to water yeah um yeah, I think I suit this way of playing a bit more, you know. Obviously, with Bielsa, it was man-to-man. Mm. But with this style of play, you don't have to stay with your man, basically. You can stay in between two men. And if it goes to the left side, you can all go as a team mm. to that guy. So, yeah, instead of st- focusing on your man so much, you can jump to a different man. And, yeah, that suits me to a T, basically. Like, right. I love showing a, like, aggression and pressing off the ball. Um, I want to just talk a little bit about mental resilience because... Um, you know you've been playing so so well in the under twenty threes, but then when when obviously uh, you've you've come into the, the first team, it's usually been in a situation where we're not we're not doing particularly well already. You know whether it was the the, the Crawley game or Arsenal or whatever, and you're being asked to perform in a match um, that's already not really going our way, and that must be quite uh, quite difficult sometimes. Um, yeah, how is, is how, how has it been for, for you to sort of to, to, to work through that as a young player and not have your confidence rattled too much? Because you clearly haven't. I mean, you, you're playing yeah. as, as good as ever. Yeah, uh, it is it is tough coming on in them situations. Obviously, you come off the pitch sometimes and you're thinking, oh, like, oh, I hope I get another chance, basically. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When, when you're under the cush and stuff. But yeah, um, you've just got to be mentally strong and like go into training every day, work hard and try and show you the one of the best in the group. So, yeah, that's what I've tried to do. And obviously, it is tough coming on in them type of games. But, yeah, that's when mental strength comes in and you have got to be really strong. Do you find having somebody like Mark Jackson, Jacko, uh, part of the senior coaching staff, somebody that you've worked with, obviously, in the 23s um, this year and last, do you find that if you do have something that you feel like you need to get off your chest, you need to, to ask a question about that he's made it easier for you to make that transition into the first team with? Uh, yeah, I'd say 100% because he's such he's such an approachable guy. Obviously, working with him before, you can always ask him anything. And to be fair, all the new first team stuff are like that. It's like more of a togetherness. You can talk to anyone. And I think that's the way the gaffer like has tried to make it, make it be, if you know what I mean. So you can, yeah. if you've got something to say, it's like such a good environment. You can talk to anyone about it which is, I think, is really good for us as a club and the lads. It's a great atmosphere at the minute. It feels like there's a really um, a really seamless transition right now from the 23s into into the first team. Um, but what are, 
What are some of the biggest differences that you face? I mean, I, I mean, I mean, in, in general, I mean, the training, not just the 90 minutes on the pitch, but in general, what are some of the biggest changes that, that, that you face when you make that jump? Yeah, I think it's just um, the difference is, like, is playing with men, basically. Yeah. Obviously, they're a lot stronger and faster and you've got to think a bit quicker, if you know what I mean. So before the ball comes in, you've got to have that picture of what you're going to do next, where maybe t- in the 23s, it could be like, the game could be a bit min- a bit more slower, but with with the first team, yeah, it's it's really it's really quick and Relentless. the tempo's high and yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, you when you joined the club, you were talking about how you can you can relate to to the people of Leeds, the the working class core, um, at, at Sunderland where you're from originally. Yeah. Do you still feel like that? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I feel like that even more now. I've played in the first team and you see the fans and. Like, yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, I can just relate. Like, similar people, kind of. Like, it's a working class area and, yeah, everyone works hard for what they want. So it's a similar area and I just feel like I can could, I could relate to them. How See, well, I had that as well. I had that as well. I think that's why you 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 want to give a little bit more. You feel that, yeah. that energy, you feel that passion coming from the fans, from the, the, the club, from your family, and you want to give it all back. Yeah, Trust 100%. me. Enjoy that. Enjoy that moment. Hmm. Nurture it and figure out how to make it work best for you as well. Because once you've done that, sky is the limit, bro. Honestly, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, it's a nice feeling, man. Right, you've been in Leeds for a little bit now. What's your favourite part of Leeds? Um, I just like the city centre. I like going there for food. As I say, I feel what, like I'm where? at home. Where's your, where's your hotspot? Um, San Carlo. Oh, like hello. Okay. I love it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, as I say, like, it just feels like I'm at home now, basically. Like, right. I just like going to the city centre just for a bit of shopping or just for something to do, yeah. And you get you get attention when you're in there, like, off the fans. And, how does that yeah, How does that feel? Because obviously you probably, I mean, people kn- knew who you are. You, you, it was a big deal when you when you signed. And I want, I want to get on to, to the signing in a moment, actually. Um, so people knew who you were, even in the 23s, and you were, you were scoring you know, every week, every bloody week. Um, but now your first team, have you noticed a difference in that? Like, because Bex has told us stories before, you know, the people of Leeds, what, what, what the club means to them. Um, is the attention, uh, is that something that's changed since you've been playing in first team? Yeah, it has got like a little bit more, but like I appreciate it at the same time because like you can see how much it means to them just to get a photo. Like, and I'm thinking, why, why do you want a photo with me? Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, that's what I think, but... You can see how much it actually means to them just to have a photo with you, and like that's what I mean about like relating to them. Because when I was little, and I supported someone that was exactly the same. Like I used to. Who, who were your Who were your um, Who were the players you looked up to the most when you're at Sunderland when you were Besides, a youngster? Little, Besides Michael Bridges, like, obviously. Besides Michael Bridges, yeah. obviously. <laughs> um, I used to love Asamo Jean. Remember? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Sessegnon, Darren Bent, and obviously Defoe when he was there. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I think he was my favourite like before. Unbelievable. Well, it, hey, here's the thing. I was playing a charity match uh, with Simon Grayson the other day and yeah. the um, the guy on the PA on the microphone called me Jermaine Defoe. I'll take that all day long. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. God. laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Faces all over the poster, names oh, everywhere. Dear. Jermaine Defoe, have some of that. Absolute oh, mick take. <laughs> Couldn't believe it, man. I don't know whether, yeah, I don't know whether I'd be happy or, or good about that. I don't know. Um, um, let me let me just ask you about um, when you first uh, signed Sam, because because obviously you were you're an in demand player. Um, there were a lot of teams that wanted to to snap you up, and, and and I remember reading a lot of Arsenal fans being pretty gutted that um, mm. that you were staying there. Um, what was it about Leeds? Um, what you know? Why, why? What what was it about the setup, the city? What what attracted you up here? Um, one, like, it was off north, and I love being up north. <laughs> uh, hear. But yeah, just like, just the way Leeds play, like, the desire in the team, the history, like, everything about it, basically. Like, as soon as I knew Leeds were in for me, I was like, 100%. To me, dad, me agent, I was like, yeah, that suits me to a team. And even the way Bielsa did play, like, with, like, with the passion and mm. had them playing and had the fans going, like, I couldn't say no. I was like, wow. I was blown away, basically, when I first did the... I first met them at Ellen Road. Yeah, I was blown away. I come out, and that's when I made me made me decision. I was like, yeah, 100%. 100%. So, 
it's, it's easy, isn't it? It's an easy yeah. decision. Mate, it was. You're, you're, you're preaching easy. to me, bro. You're saying the same thing I told Matty already. He doesn't yeah. know. Nobody really knows, you know, Matty, yeah. uh, who he who he is and that. I've, I've, I've played at Ellen Road, <laughs> but I didn't quite get the reception that maybe you lads would have got. I don't think. <laughs> That's because we weren't there in the crowd, mate. We would have given you a load of... Yeah, yeah Matthew, yeah. go on! <laughs> um, no, not as soon as you'd seen me play, you would have... <laughs> yeah, take him off! <laughs> we'll yeah, all of that. Him off. Nah. <laughs> um, look, before you go, just a quick one. You've been, um, you've been a regular uh, in the, the England setup, obviously, the England ranks. Um, have you set yourself any, any targets for, for breaking into the first team? Um, England first team, obviously, after breaking into the, the lead team. I mean, debut tw- under 21's goal, that's got to feel pretty, uh, that's got to be at least one target ticked off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was really nice. But obviously, yeah, that's that's the target in the future. Um, it's a dr- it will be a dream come true to obviously play for the senior squad. And I've, I've been in every age group now, so that's the last one. And that would be like a dream come true to be able to do that one day. And hopefully, if I keep working hard, I believe that one, one day I could like, hopefully. We believe in you, mate. Yeah, I've no stay doubt we're going to be stay hungry. We're going to be yeah. seeing a lot of you for the, at least the rest of this season and, and beyond. So um, I'm sure hey, you never know. Pat, Pat might get the chop from this podcast, mate. You might be you might be getting a regular slot. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you no, one really one last it. question just to reiterate. Why is it that you prefer the north over the south? Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I just do. I just <laughs> don't. Sammy, leave him. Just ignore uh, him, mate. He's I trying to set you up. <laughs> just ignore Bex, just because he's a soft southerner. You can ignore him and just talk uh, to me. Harder. Yeah, that's what it is. There we're we go. God, what Roll. am I hearing here? Nails up north, Look, mate. Absolute nails. I've been up north almost as long as I've been down south. So I'm, I'm a northerner. I'm a northerner. Hard as nails. <laughs> <laughs> This is the official Leeds United podcast.